Day three of the Alamo siege, February 25th, 1836. By the third day of the siege, Santa Ana had rolled into San Antonio, the flag of no quarter had been hoisted, parleys had failed, Travis had sent out three letters requesting reinforcements, including one that many Texans know by heart. James Bowie had become incapacitated. The Mexicans had set up artillery batteries and had done some reconnaissance around the Alamo compound. Now, with much of the housekeeping and administrative work of siege warfare attended to, today there would be fighting. At 9.30 in the morning, Santa Ana rode up to the artillery battery at the bend of the San Antonio River, here about 400 yards from the Alamo, consisting of one howitzer, one six-pounder, and one eight-pounder, or two eight-pounders, depending on who you ask. The plan was to begin a bombardment from the river battery while a column of cazadores, light infantry, and the Matamoros Battalion, with Santa Ana riding behind them, crossed the river and advanced upon the Alamo using jacales as cover. This movement eventually put them within pistol range of the Texians who fired on the advancing force, wounding, according to Colonel Juan Amante, six men and killing two more. This action went on for the better part of two hours. While his men exchanged fire with the Texians, Santa Ana invested himself in a different kind of action entirely. Not all of the Hakales had been abandoned. According to Sergeant Francisco Becerra, it was during this attack on the morning of the third day of the siege that Santa Ana got himself what I call his siege wife. One of the Hakales was occupied by a mother and her lovely daughter. General Castrillon asked the woman why she was still there and if she was afraid. She said she was still there because it was her home and that no, she actually wasn't afraid. Upon hearing about this woman's comely daughter, Santa Ana said, and I'm obviously paraphrasing here, Woohoo! Alrighty, we need to make this happen. Here, take this note from me. It's signed by me. I'm kind of a big deal. Give it to her mother and she'll send her daughter. The message was delivered as directed and according to Becerra, it said, Hey, I'm Santa Ana, president of Mexico, except technically not right now because I'm commanding this army, but I'll be president again later. Anyways, I command you to send your daughter to my quarters immediately. Again, I'm paraphrasing. The mother's response? Yeah, tell Santa Ana that I'm a respectable woman. My dad husband was an officer in the Mexican army when it did respectable things and Santa Ana ain't my president. The only way you'll get your dirty mitts on my daughter is if you marry her. So there. Well, another of Santa Ana's officers devised a way to get around this defiant mother. According to Becerra, this officer had a man in his command who was well-educated, a great rascal, and capable of performing all sorts of tricks, even the impersonation of a priest. I bet it's not obvious at all where this is headed. The man was sent for and was ready to do the bidding of His Excellency. He went to a priest and in the name of General Santa Ana, President of Mexico, asked for and received vestments and all necessary to celebrate a nuptial ceremony according to the rites of the Roman Catholic Church. How romantic. According to Becerra, after Santa Ana left San Antonio, his siege bride was sent to Mexico where she later gave birth to a son. We don't know when or if she ever found out her marriage wasn't actually solemnized by the church and that her child was a bastard. I bet you didn't know that during the first fighting of the Alamo siege, this is what Santa Ana was up to. Now back to the Alamo. The Texians firing from the trenches around the Alamo pushed the Mexicans out of the Jacales, away from the Alamo, and into La Villita and to the Alameda. After two hours, the firing was over. Now this may sound like a Texian victory, but it really wasn't. It was an effective defense. When the Mexicans retreated to the Alameda here, and La Villita here, they spent the evening digging trenches. By the end of the third day, they had entrenched encampments on the Alamo side of the San Antonio River. After dark, two of the Texians were sent out to torch the Jacales that had given cover to Santa Ana's troops earlier in the day. William Barrett Travis drafted a letter to Sam Houston, who was, at the time, not the president of the Republic, because the Republic of Texas did not exist yet. Sam was commander-in-chief of the regular army, but he was away treating with the Cherokees. Of course, Travis didn't know any of that, and he penned a letter anyway to catch General Houston up on the developments of the siege. In this letter, 
matter, he mentioned former U.S. congressman and all-around famous guy David Crockett as animating the men to do their duty. He asked Houston to send men to help level the playing field in San Antonio. If they overpower us, we fall a sacrifice at the shrine of our country, and we hope posterity in our country will do our memory justice. According to Juan Seguin, a council was held to determine exactly who would risk getting out of the compound alive to deliver the message to Houston. A vote was taken and Seguin was chosen, but Travis argued that Seguin must stay. He had the best knowledge of the Spanish language and the culture of the troops that surrounded the Alamo. But similar arguments were made for why Seguin would most likely get through the Mexican lines alive. So Juan Seguin met his orderly near the acequia and they made it out alive around 8 p.m. Roughly an hour later, a harsh wind whipped up and another late February norther swept over central Texas. So the Texians went out to set fire to more jacales between the Alamo and the Mexican troops in their new entrenched position near the Alameda. Lights out in the Mexican camp was just before midnight. And so the curtain closes on the third day of the siege. The Texians had repelled an attack, Santa Ana had taken a siege bride, and the Mexicans had closed the distance between themselves and the Alamo. They now had a presence on every side of the compound except for the north, and that will change tomorrow on the fourth day of the siege. Until then, God in Texas, y'all.